continuing our in-depth analysis of one of the greatest frauds or hoaxes ever perpetrated. The vaccine big pharma industry pushing verifiably dangerous products on the population and attempting to hoax the public that it's the law that you must take these shots as Rick Perry did four years ago in Texas now becoming a national issue. And of course we documented the latest hoax where they have people connected to Merck and financed by Bill and Melinda Gates and others openly coming out and wearing their white doctor's coats saying nobody's ever gotten sick from this. In fact, we'll give $10,000 to anybody that can prove that Gardasil has ever damaged anybody. And I went and looked up the numbers a few days ago. It was 18,000 plus adverse reactions from the Gardasil HPV alone. And on top of that, I was talking to Dr. Wakefield. He was saying it's now above 20,000. I can't think of anybody better, sir, to interview than you, because you yourself, and I've seen the documents and the reports, you are also a victim of their hoax. They just keep saying you've been discredited when the opposite has happened. Good to have you here with us. It's great to be here, Alex. Thank you very much. Let's start before we get into uh, their latest activities and the incredible developments in California that you've been uh, fighting that's gotten almost no national attention. Let's start, though, with their hoax against you who you are, what you've gone through, the new studies that have come out and the old studies that have been discovered confirming your research. And I know you got some surprises in the future, but we won't get into that today. Uh, but basically what you've gone through. Well, Alex, I'm an academic gastroenterologist. Parents came to me, said my child was fine, had a vaccine, in this case, the MMR vaccine, and then they regressed into autism. We investigated the children's gastrointestinal symptoms that had been left in abeyance by the doctors, and lo and behold, the parents were right, the kids were sick. When we treated them, not only did the bowel disease get better, but the autism improved as well. So there's a link between the bowel and the brain, and there may well be a link between that and the vaccines. And raising that issue, merely asking for further research to be done, led the world to come down on my shoulders and the shoulders of any doctor who dared to question the safety of this vaccine. Well, that was 15, 16 years ago, we're still in the game. There is undoubtedly a connection between these vaccines in some way and neurodevelopmental regression into diseases such as autism. And that is not going to go away. We are going to resolve that issue and we're going to resolve it right here. Well, uh, even the big federal vaccine damage fund has paid out just lately. I saw 80 plus families of autistic children. The federal government on one side admits there's this connection. And then on the other side, they come out and run this hoax just using a reporter to say you've been discredited. Uh, and it seems to be their stock and trade to just make outrageous claims like the new one. Uh, can you speak to this new claim that they're saying? Uh, because now Gardasil's become a national issue in the campaign with all the Republican candidates attacking Rick Perry uh, and uh, the claim by uh, Merck operatives that no one's ever been hurt by this? Well, if you look at the adverse events reporting system, and got to remember, this is the VAERS system. It's a federal system run by the CDC. It is known to report to, to accumulate 1 to 10 percent of adverse reactions, a small minority. And the latest report I saw in there was 22,000 reports of adverse reactions from this vaccine alone, the Gardasil vaccine or the, the uh, cervical cancer vaccine. And that is alarming. That's nearly one quarter of the total reports of adverse reactions in that system. So there is a real problem with this vaccine. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hundreds of different vaccines out there, hundreds and hundreds of variants of each vaccine, different companies out there. I, I, I don't have the numbers, but I know there's thousands of different variants out there. And you're saying it's nearly a quarter of all adverse reactions are directly being attributed to Gardasil? The latest number was 24% of the total wow. number is attributed are attributed to the cervical vaccine. That is one of the two that are available on the market. Well, earlier we, we played some of these clips and, and, and covered it in this ridiculous $10,000 challenge. And I've even had callers on the radio say, well, there's a challenge. They're saying no one's ever gotten sick. Why would they issue a $10,000? A dollar challenge. Well, they never have to defend that challenge. They've defined that challenge. I mean, it's is hoax a strong enough word to describe what they've done to you, uh, saying that you were discredited with no evidence, but just distributing the information all over media? Uh, and is hoax a big enough word to describe uh, their operatives' claims that no one has ever had an adverse reaction? Well, I think this is laughable. It's a disgrace. And here you have a professor of bioethics from the University of Pennsylvania indulging in some publicity stunt by offering a $10,000 uh, award. 
if, uh, if this Congresswoman Backman can come forward with someone who has suffered mental retardation from this vaccine. What a disgrace that we should ever be in that situation. The job of scientists, physicians, is to answer the fundamental questions about whether these vaccines are safe or not, or whether they're needed in the first place. And to then indulge in some scam, some circus act of offering $10,000 in the face of many, many children who've been severely damaged by these vaccines, then that is uh, utterly reprehensible. Now, doctor, uh, separately, I've seen the press reports out there uh, dealing with other vaccines and autoimmune disorders. And I know on the H1N1 insert, it said it could cause autoimmune disorders, was linked to cancer, could cause Guillain-Barre, other um, problems with the brain, uh, could cause narcolepsy. And I know talk show hosts personally who called and apologized and said, my God, I took that and couldn't feel my hands and feet for a month, went to the doctor and they said, it's an adverse reaction, Guillain-Barre, you've had some type of brain nerve inflammation. So, so, so this is in the literature. And back when they were testing it in 2006, 2007, I was having medical doctors on. It was local newscasts reporting it around the country that people were having autoimmune disorders, convulsions, blood coming out of different orifices, dying. And I'm no rocket scientist, but the scientist I interviewed said uh, it's, it's, it's causing an autoimmune problem. Well, now we learn uh, just last week, I know you were on my radio show uh, with Mike Adams sitting in and, and, we, and we showed the documents that a, a vaccine testing company tested 13 different lots and found that they had bound uh, more of the virus RNA or DNA uh, than they normally do and that it was bound to the adjuvant and that it would, uh, most scientists said, would then probably trigger autoimmune disorders. How could they have different manufacturers for Merck uh, binding it to that. I mean, that sounds like that's done on purpose, but I know that's a side issue. I'm putting the cart before the horse. Uh, what do we know specifically uh, th that these vaccines are doing to cause autoimmune problems? Well, we don't, and this is the tragedy. We should and we do not know. Now, what's happened here is that the proteins of the virus should be in the vaccine to promote the immune response. What they now find after giving this to millions of people years down the line, uh, that the vaccine actually contains recombinant DNA from the virus bound, as you say, to the aluminum adjuvant. That is a very dangerous combination. And we know that in certain autoimmune diseases, such as lupus, then you develop antibodies against DNA. And that is part of the disease process. Here we have a situation where the adjuvant that's designed to promote, to boost, to aggravate the immune response is bound to this foreign DNA that they did not know was there in the first place. And that is a potentially very dangerous situation. So to say that the benefits of this vaccine outweigh the risks when you didn't even know this stuff was there in the first place is unacceptable. Well, Doc, we played a clip last week when you came on the show of one of the developers, co-developers with SOC of polio and other vaccines, and they just admitted on CBC and laughed about it. They said, yeah, there's a leukemia viruses in a lot of these shots. Um, yes, there was the uh, SV40 that caused a lot of cancers. That's not even debated, and it's in all the medical literature, but then when we warn people about this, they just laugh at us and say that we're hoaxing. I mean, they're clearly the hoaxers. Um, I know you focused on the gut. I mean, that's what you're a medical doctor of. You, you look at that, and I know off record you told me some very exciting uh, things that you're going to be releasing in just the next few weeks, uh, but, but clearly... Uh, from my perspective, their hoax against you, their hoax on Gardasil saying it's totally safe, is not working. Uh, I just can't wait to see uh, these people really be punished for what they've done instead of persecuting real uh, medical doctors who are trying to actually keep their Hippocratic Oath. Well, the sadness for me, Alex, is that so many children, and in this case with Gardasil, young women have been damaged along the way in the absence of any real knowledge of what's going on. This vaccine, the Gardasil vaccine, the Cerevix vaccine are a major problem for the federal agencies. One is they now discovered it's contaminated. Two, the safety studies were never adequate in the first place. It was rushed to market. Even the developers of the vaccine, uh, Diane Harper, was particularly concerned about the way in which this was marketed. It was not intended for originally for women in first world countries like the states. It is a marketing exercise. And now we have in California this effort to mandate the vaccine for girls and not only do so, allow girls of 12, 13, 14 go against parent, potentially their parental advice 
their parental insight and say they're going to have the vaccine instead. Uh, and, and that is going to destroy the fabric of the family. How can you possibly usurp the rights of the parents to dictate, dictate their children's health care um, needs uh, and wishes when, in fact, the state takes over, the pharmaceutical industry take over, and clandestinely, without the parents knowing, in the absence of the parents' permission, or indeed explicitly against the parents' wishes, go ahead and have this vaccine. It's really very, very damaging as a precedent to set. I took off a few days over the weekend, and I was listening on my um, iPad while I was jogging on vacation to the iPhone app of my radio show, and you were a guest when Mike Adams was uh, sitting in guest hosting, and I heard what you were saying about California, and I believed it because I've looked at your research, and I, I don't just trust what you're saying, but still, I was taken back by the information on California. As soon as I got back to the hotel, I went directly to the internet and found out it was all over California news. It had not become a national news story yet, and that indeed, they, th th that the bill was on the desk of the governor passed to not get parental consent for the Gardasil shot of young girls in schools. And again, people think that I'm gonna know everything. I don't. It, it's always far worse than I could even imagine. It, but, but, but even I, as much as I know, I, it was so hard to believe that, that not only would Perry run this hoax and say, it's the law, you've gotta take this shot and then be exposed four years ago, but that they would actually get a state to make it the law. And as you pointed out on the radio, this is where they show them a film, they have a you know, PR person, and they go, oh, look, this girl's going to get it first. Isn't she, isn't she brave? And then they give them iPads and all the rest of this. I actually went and looked it up. They've done that with similar systems. But then I went and looked up the law. I remembered this, but I went and checked the law. And here's the key, and I want you to comment on this. If, if a 20-year-old man gets a 15-year-old girl to get in their car and he has sex with her, even if she consented, it's statutory rape because she's not at the age to be able to consent. Um, if, if, if a killer entices a five-year-old to get in the car because they have a puppy, uh, it, it isn't okay because that person doesn't really have free will yet in common law until the age of 18. And so it really is forced inoculation to not tell the parents and then induce them and brainwash them to do it. And then separately, it's such a wild escalation of authoritarian, tyrannical activity. And I want you to speak to this to, to in America, or any free country, say we're not going to tell parents we're going to shoot their kid up with something while it's a national controversy and has been linked to so many illnesses and even deaths. Uh, it's just off the charts for me that, that it's reached this level. And if they get away with this, they want to forcibly inoculate every girl in Mexico. Now they're saying little boys. I know of cases where CPS take people's children because they won't vaccinate. When there's not even a law. I mean, we are seeing a medical tyranny in this country, and I know that's how the tyranny started in Germany, was first through the medical system. Can you speak to my little rant here? Certainly, Alex. Fundamental to the fabric of society, American society, society anywhere, is the family structure. Our parents raising their children adequately, sensibly, based upon their own experience, and protecting them, protecting them from things that they, as adults, feel may be dangerous, harmful to their children. What we, have, what we have here is a situation where in direct violation of that, in direct violation of what the government would otherwise seek to endorse is that the family structure, the family fabric of America is sustained, is preserved, is protected. We are seeing a violation of that where the pharmaceutical industry and the state are saying, no, don't trust your parents, trust us. We know better. You don't even need to tell them perhaps. And we'll coerce you. Children are the most vulnerable to this kind of coercion, this kind of propaganda. So if you show them a movie, first period in school, where they see a, a woman dying of severe cervical cancer, they're going to be terrified, justifiably terrified. And that's the kind of motivation I fear is going to be introduced into this process to coerce these children into getting this vaccine without adequate informed consent, without the children understanding the basis of informed consent, without being told about the adverse reactions, without being told that there have been more than 100 deaths so far reported to the, va the vaccine adverse events reporting system, and all of this contrary, perhaps, to the parents' advice to protect their children. What about the precedent in this area? If they can brainwash your children and get them to consent, you've got to get a letter from the parents to take a fifth grader to the zoo or the planetarium but you don't have to get consent to inject them. We saw this during the H1N1. 
in Oklahoma and Alabama and other states where they were accidentally shooting up kids they hadn't gotten the consent for. Uh, this is part of a just diabolical, I mean, the diabolical nature of Big Pharma. Earlier in the show, we played clips, even in mainstream news, they admitted that Bayer knew that they were shipping out tens of thousands of ampules of contaminated factor eight with HIV and hepatitis, the atomic soldiers, the radiating of foster children. Uh, I mean, who are these people? I mean, do they just see us as lab rats? Is it a scientific power trip? What's going on here? It's a marketing exercise. It's how to get the biggest return on an expensive vaccine. And that's the tragedy. There are several problems for the vaccine, for this particular vaccine, is that there are many what are called um, uh, re-exposure phenomena. In other words, kids are getting sick on the first one, worse on the second one, and real problems on the third one. That's very strong evidence of causation. You can see in a situation where a little girl gets it at school, oh, don't tell your parents. That wasn't anything to do with the vaccine. You just had a little cold. Your arm hurt. You were just sore. Second time round, it gets worse. There are going to be real, real problems with this, and parents who are left to pick up the pieces if there is damage won't even know about it until it's well, too late. Well, that was my next point. Is I, I was thinking about that. What happens when they have adverse reactions? The school is now going to deny it. I mean, the, this is really the big pharma enticing the school to, to aid and abet and be part of this crime because I've already seen cases in the last 20 years, this, this infant death, sudden infant death syndrome, and it turned out the child has a convulsion, dies that night or in the car sometimes sometimes they die in the uh, you know nurse's office or at the hospital then they come and say well we did a cat scan there's blood on the brain you beat your child and then it's actually come out in court no it was the vaccines it's like that sky television piece they had where the girl got the gardasil and died in the class thank god or they would have said the parents killed her I mean, this is so incredible that they do this. Dr. Wakefield, uh, we're out of time for InfoWars Nightly News, but we have a feature that a lot of the viewers watch uh, that is special reports. I'm going to end the show here because of time constraints, but, but please stay with us, if you will. I want to come back and try to uh, you know, give you the floor for 10 minutes or so to get into some of the other incredible things you're working on. But you are certainly a humanitarian. In closing, tell the viewers out there the websites where they can learn more about what you're doing. Well, I think Ebcala is a, a website they need to go to, the Elizabeth Burt Center uh, for Law and Advocacy. So this is something where they will, if they want to catch up on this story and see how it's perceived by those people who, as you know, expose the, uh, the fact that autism had been compensated or children whose neurological injury that resulted in autism has been compensated for now nearly over 30 years by the government while they were denying it on the other hand, that's a very good place to go to get an update on their position on this particular issue of the Gardasil and the Cerevix vaccines. And then your site specifically as well. My site is, uh, the, is callous-disregard.com where people can go to, to read my book and uh, uh, vaccinesafetyfirst.com is another website where we have a lot of information posted. Well, I just want to say, Dr. Wakefield, in closing, I appreciate the fact that when they demonized you, they lied at you, you never left the arena and only kept swinging. And on other shows and even national news in England's had to admit that there were other scientists that had separately done the same research but not uh, published it that found the same thing. And there have been other now research done duplicating exactly what you found and that it's a hoax uh, that you engaged in any fraud. And the fact that uh, they targeted you out of thousands of doctors and scientists and activists is because you are articulate, you are very effective, you've got a lot of uh, Hollywood stars uh, like Jenny McCarthy involved, and they're scared of you. Uh, but like the Phoenix, you are rising again because you never got swatted down to begin with. And I can't think of a more important issue than this medical big pharma tyranny that we can be fighting. And God bless you for your stalwart. Thank you, Thank you for having me on the show. Thank, Thank you so much. We're going to come right back to you in overdrive. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, that's it for InfoWars Nightly News. This is the type of information we cover here each and every day. And uh, it, it is a real honor to be able to work with people like Dr. Wakefield and the countless other uh, individuals out there who cannot be bought, who cannot be intimidated. We know cancer rates have doubled in the last few decades. Diabetes has doubled, uh, the, the major type. We know that our friends and family are dying of cancer. We know, as we covered earlier, the Rockefeller Foundation plan to put sterilants in vaccines and also cancer viruses. We will cover this eugenics agenda. It started in England, became popular in the United States. The Rockefellers funded Adolf Alois Hitler. Uh, he carried out his first tyranny through medical tyranny. And that's all this is, 
is uh, basically a profit motive linked up with a bunch of control freak eugenicists who are above the law. It is time that the court of public opinion rout out these devils. Lord willing, we'll see you back tomorrow night, 7 p.m. Central, 8 p.m. Eastern, for InfoWars Nightly News. Great job to the crew. Again, we'll see you out there, ladies and gentlemen, on the front lines. Okay, my friends, that was the nightly news because I've got a lot of TV systems wanting to start picking this up. We've got to start honing it down to 30 minutes in the next few months. Uh, but now we're going to start posting these expanded interviews uh, in the special reports section of PrisonPlanet.tv and InfoWarsNews.com. And please download these videos, upload them to YouTube, share them with everyone you know because we are definitely having a big effect. Uh, doctor, that's my final question, and I want to give you the floor for t at least 10 minutes to flesh out any other areas that I didn't get into because I was asking a lot of the questions. Is it not a uh, buoying positive sign that every other Republican candidate, Mitt Romney, Michelle Bachman, uh, and of course driven by Dr. Ron Paul, who first you know, uh, started talking about it, uh, that they're all attacking Rick Perry for it, that it's driven down his poll numbers, uh, that we've seen national polls of close to 90 percent are against Gardasil and, and, and think that Perry trying to push force inoculation was wrong. I mean, is that not a really positive sign that going from being voices in the wilderness, now this is becoming one of the biggest issues in the country? And because you are a leading advocate for vaccine awareness uh, of the dangers, uh, what are you seeing? I, I mean, I mean, is my my uh, political and media view of what I'm seeing, is that accurate? Are people waking up? Yeah, well, my principal concern, Alex, as you know, is vaccine safety, a safety first vaccine agenda. So what we have here is a fascinating situation. There is nothing that the federal agencies, the CDC and the pharmaceutical industry want more than to keep this out of the news, to be silent about this, to pass the laws that allow them to do what they want but for it never to make the news. Now, God forbid, it's reached the national stage where it's become an issue during the presidential candidacy, candidacy race. Now, that's an extraordinary situation, and it's not going to go away. So they've overreached, they've overstepped, and now it's part of the mix. And when uh, Dr. Kaplan, the uh, bioethicist, I say with some reservation from UPenn, offered $10,000, to the congresswoman to find someone who had been injured by this vaccine with res that resulted in mental retardation then it raised the stakes even further it kept it in the news now an australian businessman whose daughter was damaged by the hpv vaccine has come back and offered ten thousand dollars to him to prove that children have not been injured in this way by the vaccine so suddenly it's right in the news front and center and it's not going to go away. And the parents of children who have been damaged by this vaccine or who have potentially been damaged, who are intelligent, articulate parents who were not anti-vaccine, who encouraged their daughters to get this vaccine, are now regretting it, are not going to let this go away. They are deeply offended by the notion that the CDC are coming forward and saying no one has ever been damaged by this vaccine. It's perfectly safe. When the, the numbers are there being collected by the CDC itself. And one of the concerns I have is that they're accumulating these numbers, these 20,000, 22,000, whatever it is, adverse reactions to this vaccine. What are they doing with those? What are they doing with those reports? Those reports, each and every one, should be thoroughly investigated, meticulously investigated, with the child investigated, the child examined, the child put... Well, we've testing. scanned for, yeah. for now almost five years the reports on local news. That's where it's been getting out. It's always the same. Autoimmune, can't walk, can't talk, blood coming out of every orifice. I mean, this is some nasty stuff. Yeah. And, and then they can't debate the fact that in quite a few cases, they drop dead in minutes. I mean, it's bam, shot dead, and they're like, oh, this isn't caused by that. I mean, this isn't going to work. And as you said, these pro-vaccine folks who bought into the system, they're going in and then now experiencing the deaths, the carnage, the convulsions. Uh, the, uh, w w one of the most common is just little bloody yeah. spots all over their body. Uh, this is just amazing. Uh, and and the, the attitude of the vaccine lobby is, let's just go forward. It doesn't matter. And, and, and on top of it, this is something they tried to force. 
and then we're here complaining about it, and they're saying, oh, no, there's never been a problem, and it's just an amazing hoax. Well, what, what you see, what has happened to me, and perhaps you and others in, in, in turn, is that when you've come out and said something against vaccine uh, trials or the at lack of safety studies, we've been attacked. There's been an unholy attack on us. Well, okay, but the trouble is when politicians get involved and they get attacked as well, they start to see what we've been going through. And they say to themselves, wow, maybe this is, you know, maybe it all was a great big hoax in the first place. The vehemence of the attack against me for merely suggesting that Governor Rick Perry was wrong in what he did, something to which I think he's now admitted he did the wrong thing. But when you start leveling that kind of attack against other people, politicians, journalists, other scientists, people are going to collectively say, wow, now we know what that guy went through. And this is the attack we, we get for just making a reasonable request. That's what happened with Al Gore. As top scientists would come out and say, well, sea levels are dropping and uh, carbon dioxide doesn't cause temperature to go up. Here we have the ice core graphs. We have the sun, you know, the scans of the sun. And they would be attacked and, and said, how dare you? You need to be fired. That made tens of thousands of other scientists come out and challenge them. And now even the Green Movement is telling Al Gore he needs to step down and that their carbon tax is basically dead. I think it's that attempt to persecute that you just alluded to that is going to bring back the spirit of research. I think that's right. They've overreached. They have overreached. And trying to force this vaccine on 12-year-old, 13-year-old girls in California without their parental consent has caused a lot of right-thinking people who are invested in the liberty of this country and the Constitution saying, no, this is not an issue about Gardasil or not. This is not a, an issue about cervical cancer or not. It's about usurping the rights of parents to determine the health care choices of their children. And you cannot take that away. And they've well, made a huge mistake. Well, that's well said. Even if you're for this Gardasil, now you want your kids injected without you knowing? I mean, no one should support that. And, and, and there's been a few national stories on this. We played a clip earlier of one of these bureaucrats promoting it on Fox News, saying, yeah, it's all right for parents not to know. Uh, or basically being like a deer in the headlights. I mean, this is so, so Orwellian. Uh, Dr. Wakefield, in the time we've got a few minutes, any other points uh, that you'd like to raise. I mean, I would like you just to briefly to talk about, because it was a few months ago that I last interviewed you on it and saw some of the news in England, where it turns out studies previous to yours that you weren't aware of actually duplicated what you'd done, and now others have duplicated it. And we're seeing numbers out of Asia. I saw one country where it's uh, more than one in 40 becoming autistic. South Korea, one in 36 children now have an autistic spectrum disorder. That is an extraordinary number. No society can sustain that level of damage. I do not know what is going to happen, and those numbers are surely reflected elsewhere in the world. Uh, South Korea is not alone in that. So we have a major, major problem. And until right-thinking Americans, until right-thinking people stand back and say, there is a major issue here, and we need to address it, it is now recognized that the disease envir is environmental. The mainstream, whatever that was, the old guard have had to completely reverse their position on the relative roles of genetics and the environment. It's now a major environmental disease. Does it hit boys because, as all doctors know, or at least I've always heard it said, girls are tougher? I mean, why then statistically has it been worse on boys? A number of things. I mean, we know that thimerosal can interact with testosterone to potentiate the adverse effects of, of the mercury compound that oestrogen protects the brain, so are girls relatively protected compared with boys? Are girls really overall tougher, as other doctors have told it me? It may well be. Certainly, as, as neonates and infants, they have a lower infant mortality rate from infectious disease. So history has told us that girls are tougher at the, from the get-go. Wow. Uh, please continue. This is in, uh, incredible information. So it's just, uh, going from memory, what was it? 30 years ago, it was 1 in 25,000. Then a decade ago, it was, what, 1 in 5,000, roughly. And then just uh, two years ago, it was 1 out of 160. And then 1 out of, what was it, 98 in the U.S. And I've seen numbers as, as 1 in 55. And then in South Korea, you said 1 out of 36. My God. 36. The U.K. figures are in the order of 1 in 50, 1 in 48. Well, then so. they say it's over-reporting and that doctors are just claiming people are autistic. No, 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 no. I, I'm only 37 years old. There was a tiny special ed area at the school I went to in Dallas, and, and then a few years of high school here in Austin. Tiny. Now some schools, a third of normal schools are this. I try to take my children, uh, j just observing, to, to movies, and they'll have several rows lined up of children who are clearly autistic, 
and I just, my heart cries out for them. I go to the mall, I go to the hike and bike trail. It's, it's everywhere, doctor. I mean, do we have to have all our children uh, being locked up in this cage uh, of, of, of mental brain damage before we do something? I mean, clearly, clearly it's the pesticides and the, all this cocktail of things, but from all the scientists I've talked to, like Dr. Blaylock, prestigious brain surgeon, he says though the vaccines push it over the edge because they're injected directly into the body. I think there's a lot of truth to that. There is an overstimulation of an infant's immune system. They cannot, nor they, were they ever designed to deal with this barrage of environmental insults in this way um, from the earliest times. So there is a huge problem. It's no point in ignoring it. We need to address it. As you say, and there are now the numbers are 54%, uh, according to one report recently, of American children have some chronic health disorder. 54%, one in three children, one in six children have some kind of neurodevelopmental impairment. This is an alarming number of children and quite unacceptable. Uh, the US has one of the highest infant mortality rates amongst first world countries in the world where wow. vaccination is most intensive. So uh, if you're seeking to reduce infant mortality rate in developing countries, then you're not going to do it by introducing vaccinations more intensively. You're gonna do it by uh, introducing the basics such as food and water and clean living. And I've also read the mercury in the vaccines is actually altering our DNA permanently, generationally. Th 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 this is like waking up in a science fiction nightmare. Now, now just briefly, sir, um, here in closing, I know you don't like to even defend yourself because you know you've got the facts, but uh, you, you were talking about the studies that have now come out that you learned were done in England, separate from you that had basically the same results. Well, I think the most compelling study recently was actually, in ter terms of support of, of my position, was the one from um, the, from the uh, Pace Law School, showing that, in fact, the government in this country has been settling cases of brain damage where the outcome was autism in the child uh, for over 30 years. So Before that, you? Yeah, before me, long before I ever came on the scene. Well, they hate uh, you because you hit the nail on the head, buddy. Mm -hmm. You hit bullseye on their butt. And they should have been researching this. They should have been following those children in the long term to protect future children from being damaged. They did not do their job properly. And that is a serious omission. But there was another study you were telling me about in England where they basically found some of the same, same things that you've done. Um, I don't know, it was a while back we talked. There's, I mean, there's so many of these studies. There are now so many studies. In fact, another one just came out from Harvard three days ago that I saw confirming the bowel disease in children with autism. So uh, the, de the evidence is accumulating. Well, I've seen links to Crohn's with the measles. They find that in all the Crohn's uh, 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 people, basically, that they have that antibody for it living in their intestine. Well, th that work is interesting and needs to be pursued. But uh, my belief is that certainly some forms of Crohn's disease can be linked to measles exposure. Or so it's not all of them, but you're seeing it. That's right. That's correct. All I know is that all these things are epidemic. Dr. Wakefield, incredible. Thank you for staying along with us. Really appreciate your work. And uh, you've promised with these big announcements coming out, because uh, the, 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 the patriots are striking back, you've promised to come on with us when this launches. I'll be sitting right here. Wow. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, that's Overdrive, ladies and gentlemen. We're done, and that's what you get right here at PrisonPlanet.tv in the special reports section. We'll uh, see you here at InfoWars.com, PrisonPlanet.tv.